um, ready to go. Uh, hi everyone, hope you're all having a good day. I am Ictisis, and we're gonna do some Clock Tower. Although I am, I always enjoy watching you pronounce my name. It was better than last year. Uh, yeah, last year. Let's just say that. Anyway, before I break into this, allow me to describe Clock Tower all endings. Um, I can do this right here since we do have the free time for knowledge. There are nine endings in this game. We are going to get all nine of them. It says A isn't cleared, but it, it's weird on how they actually flag it. But all we're going to do is just show each of the endings. If we have time, we may show some other stuff. Anyway, I'll count it down starting now. So, three, two, one, let's go. So, I'm definitely hoping RNG is good here because before I get into this, I want to briefly mention that this game is extremely RNG based. Now, I know everyone always talks about, oh, RNG in my speedrun. However, this game is a very big case for RNG because the mansion is always procedurally generated. Uh, what that means is instead of just having the same mansion every time, I get different mansions. Uh, so this can be a 50-50 chance right now, and there's going to be a lot of resets. Luckily, the first one does not have to be a reset, so that's going to be good. Um, the long Japanese text there is a good sign. Anyway, with that out of the way, we're actually going to hit our first trick. The first ending is going to be a lot more technical stuff, but later on I can kind of talk more about the routing. But we're going to hit the first trick of the game right now, and I love this game because it makes a point-and-click kind of terrifying, and it makes a point-and-click actually speed runnable. Nobody really thinks point-and-clicks are good, however, I'm about to do a pretty massive skip that's going to allow me to skip Bobby, alternatively called Bobby's skip. So Bobby's going to just scissor this woman here. And what we're going to do is instead of running away, what we are going to run through him like this. So we just run through Bobby, cancel the action, and now we can continue forward. The reason why we do this first off is I want to go to the West Wing as soon as possible. But the way the trick works is normally if you run into Bobby, you die. It makes sense if you run into a man with giant pairs of scissors, you die. However, in this game... Since I did an action on the stairs, I'm allowed to focus on that action, because the game prioritizes actions over reactions. I'm going to be taking a marathon safe route. Um, if I wanted to go for world record, I would go left. However, I'm going to be going right, because it's going to be a bit safer. It allows me to search for more rooms. In the west wing right here, I need to find about one, uh, two of five rooms. And they are the library, pro room, this is also the empty room, one of the rooms, piano, and bathroom. The ones I want are library first off, and then crow later. We have to check as many random rooms as we can. It's always shuffled between these five rooms with every seed you do. This may have actually been the perfect seed. I really hope it wasn't, because I never get these. It's like a 1 in 80 chance to get the perfect seed. Anyway, another upside as well is all endings has seen some big... Oh, I accidentally tripped. All endings has seen some big routing changes since it started. Uh, one of the biggest being we now combine more endings together. So right now we're going to be starting off on A, but we're going to be throwing in something else if I can hopefully find the room. I'm going to be hoping we find a, a demon idol. We'll see. This is a bathroom, which is a bad room. The bathroom is one of the worst rooms you can find, by the way, because there's nothing useful about it. It's just a bad room. And while we're running, I'll kind of explain what's happening. Uh, the game has two modes, exploration and chase. In chase mode, you can't search for room. Oh my god, I got the perfect RNG! That's terrible! Why can't I get this during my world record runs, man? Like, honestly, that this is the world record RNG and I didn't get it? That's... I kind of killed my train of thought because that's really unlucky. Or really lucky, I should say. Anyway, the portrait in the bottom left with Jennifer is actually a health state. So Jennifer has multiple health states that she can kind of go by. If it's red, panic events are harder and she's more um, prone to tripping. Right now it's orange, which means I'm like medium health, so I can still get into a fight with the scissor man and I'll be fine. And I know where the library is now because we searched four rooms and the fifth room is going to be the library. There's one more random area that I need to worry about. If I get the demon idol, it's going to look good. There's another random trip. If I don't get the demon idol, this is going to be a bit bad, but it's not the end of the world. I account for my time because of the RNG in this game. Anyway, we have the library now, and why we need the library is two pronged. One, we have to get rid of Bobby. And the only way to take down Bobby is with knowledge. Now, we're gonna use the power of books to defeat Angus Young Bobby here. Simber, and then Bobby is vanished, never to be seen again. 
Dot, 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 please. I got, uh, I got the staff. That's fine. So I did get rid of Bobby, but I did not get the good luck. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to have to go back downstairs in a moment. But I'm going to do some things along the way. We need to do a doll boss fight, a little mini panic events to progress through the game. If you don't do this, you don't have the key to the end game. There's only certain amounts of things you actually need to do to get to the end, and that's where the endings differ. So the one I normally start off on is A ending, because it's a very lucky one to have. So if I get a staff, for example, which I'm getting right now, also, before I go back into that, I'm going to do some doll manipulation here. I'm hoping to get a panic event as soon as possible. Let's see if I get it. I got it! Alright, so that's doll manipulation. That doll can take anywhere from, like, two to three seconds to start so i want to have that to happen as soon as possible anyway a ending i can use the staff here because at some point i have to go into the secret library anyway in order to do that you have to figure it out and i have to go to the rooms leading up to that for a ending regardless so that's why i start off on a ending because the rng won't matter as much and it's more open to everything anyway going back into this i mentioned another trick in all endings it's pretty unique to it it's, we're allowed to use every single feature that the game offers. I think the library is the last one, by the way. So we're going to go all the way down again. But one of the features in this game is a continue slot. So if you die or you reset the console, there is an autosave in this game. And that autosave is allowed because you make it during the run. So we're going to have some interesting all endings exclusive tech that I'll be able to use for this. So this is the other room we have to find. In order to beat the game, you need one of two items, either the demon idol or the staff. The staff is bad because Jennifer natively does not know how to use a staff. Now, if you're wondering how in the world does a 14-year-old girl know how to use a demon idol, I'm pretty sure you ever talked to any 14-year-old girl, they have expertise in demon idols, trust me. Like, I remember when I was 14, there's plenty of people I knew who were doing all these rituals and stuff. It's very likely they know about a demon idol. We also get a spooky record playing, but we're going to ignore that. Now we need- now I have an item, I can start beginning where the game gets fun. I want to do something called input buffering. By mashing the item menu, I can start getting Jennifer to run off screen. This is reducing the amount of lag in the game, which will make Jennifer run faster in any room. The game gets really broken the moment you get your first item, which in this case is the staff. And again, this works in every room, and I just have to keep mashing the item menu. There's another trick I can do with items which is going to happen in this room, as you'll see, and this is called the text skip. The tech skip is one of the most important tricks in the entire game, so I'm going to do this, push both the action and the item menu together. You'll see text pop up, but I'm immediately going to skip it. Watch. There's the text, and I move my items back and forth, and it skips. And now I have the key almost immediately. And this trick is what separates the good clock tower players from the bad ones. It is a very important skill to have. The way the game is programmed is that the text gates actions. So if text ends, the action begins. Now, there's a lot of actions in this game you must do, like freeing this bird, for example, for the A ending. But now that I have that, I can just skip all the text in the room, and I, don't, I no longer have to worry about reading. Nobody likes reading in a point and click. Most speedruns aren't really enjoyed for point and clicks, because the only thing you can do in them is just go. All you can do is just read text, and that's not very interesting, spamming a button the entire time trying to read text. Now, when you're able to skip the entirety of the text, it gets much more interesting. I don't do the input buffering in this room because the door is right on Jennifer's foreground, so I want to make sure I'm not doing that. But in rooms like this, I can just spam it. Although right now, we're going to get a bit of an introduction to one of the worst things in the entire game, and if I can change anything about this speedrun, it would be this. You'll see it right now, and that is stairs. Now, Jennifer, for whatever reason, you know, being in a killer mansion, she walks upstairs like she's not about to die. I don't know why they made this the case. I mean, in any scenario, I feel like if I was being chased by anybody, I'm running up these- I'm at least fast walking up these stairs. I'm not just moving one leg at a time like my legs are made out of like 300 pound cement blocks or something. No, I, I would at least be double stepping this, you know? I would at least be walking faster than a tortoise or a turtle. Anyway, I have to go to the second floor because we need to go to the attic. This is one of the routing changes if I get the staff. And... Oh, that door is just locked. It, the camera goes a bit weird. But since I have the staff, I need a key to learn how to use the staff. And it's a variety of grabbing keys. But in order to get the key, you have to go to the attic storeroom so you can get another item, which is the pesticide. 
Luckily, I have an item, so I can just immediately skip the text and leave the room. I'll always have one of the items in the game. I always want one because it's going to allow me to skip text later in the game. One of the most impressive things about this game is you can skip the end game pretty well. And we'll see that coming up later with all the items. Normally, the end game is blocked. Like, you can get there as early as you want if you kill the doll. But even with killing the doll, you're not going to be able to pass the final quote unquote boss or block without having perfume and a robe. As you can see, I'm not going to be picking up either of those items. They're not very interesting to grab. The only time I ever have done it is, I think, in a single glitchless run, but that's not a very interesting category, if I'm being honest. It's just very standard point and click. But you'll see me do a fun skip later on. More input buffering, but this time we're going to do the first routing change from last time. And we're going to immediately, instead of going to the kitchen, I'm going to go to the garage. I mentioned I must get all nine of the endings in the game. So since we're doing A ending, I can actually chain in another ending right now in between all this. I need to be in the kitchen anyway, so what I'm going to do is put my cursor here, push both items. I missed the tech skip, but that's fine. I want the camera to move, so I'm right on the car, get the car key, and use it on this car. Clock Tower is a really awesome game because they actually let you do the thing where it's like, oh, hey, there's a car here. Why don't you just escape? Clock Tower actually lets you do that. So I text skip two things in the car. You need to talk to the car three times and you can activate it. And we're about to achieve our first ending of the game. And after about 10 minutes, there's our first ending. This is the H ending. The H ending is accomplished when you save, uh, when you see one friend die, and then you immediately leave the mansion. So far, we've seen our friend Anne die, and Anne's gonna die a lot as a heads up to everybody. But now what I can do is we got the car ending. I can now reset the game. And so we can go back to the main menu. But as I mentioned, we're gonna have continues. So I can just continue the game. And now you'll see my items were the same as before. I have the key, the insecticide, and the staff, and now we can get out of here. I have gotten one of the nine endings. We need eight more. And most of the game is trying to minimize RNG, so I want to do tricks like that that are going to prevent me from having to keep starting the game. It's hard getting seeds as it is, so I want to be careful. Anyway, the next trick is to open the fridge and grab some ham. Not really a trick, it's just more everybody knows this game because of the ham. It's probably one of the best parts of the entire game. So, yeah, JonTron, you know, he did the ham. Taking down the Scissor Man with ham. It really is the ultimate weapon. We needed the insecticide so we can actually get the key in this room. It's not going to be an inventory item, but we will end up seeing this. And before I go use the key, I'm going to try for some RNG right now. I am going to do two tech skips on this right here. Uh, the first one is just to check the shelf out and like, hey, those are drugs. The second one is going to be, am I going to drink medicine or poison? Believe it or not, I want poison. So I did not get the poison. I got medicine, which does give me a full heal, but we don't really care about the health. See, now I'm full health, but that's not the good one. The good ones, you actually get poison and then thrown into the shed. We want a we want to sneak Miss Mary's brewskis. We want to get thrown in the shed, but we did not do that. So we have to go the actual route. If I'm lucky, it's going to be the first floor. Let's see. It is the second floor. This has not been the best of luck. A lot of my time for the estimate here is accounting for different luck. Because world record in this, I think it was a 123 that I actually got during another marathon. It's a really good marathon category, weirdly enough. But it's a bit weird. So now upstairs, I'm hoping I'm going to get thrown in jail. I'm going to try it maybe, let's go three or four times. If it doesn't work, I may be able to do something else. I can immediately go for another set of endings, which would be technically faster. I may be able to get five in one go, depending on the status of this room. And we'll see it coming up right now. In this room, if Mary drugs me, I have to go for ending. If I do not get drugged, I could get four other endings immediately. We'll see what happens. And is the room dark or is it light? The room is dark. I'll try it two more times, then I'll go for the other strat. Because I'd rather get a ending done now that I have a staff. That's also one of the longest texts in the entire game. Also, to answer some questions anyone may have, the phone is just cut off. The phone always rings here, but it's just cut off, so we, you don't have to worry about that. Anyway, I'm going for A ending, so I had to get Mary in here so she can drug me. 
which now she's gonna do. It's a bit of a cutscene. It's pretty much, oh, Jennifer, you're my adopted daughter, and now that you're 14, we can finally party. We're still trusting Mary at this point in time, so she's gonna give us some wine. Now, as a true connoisseur of wine, Jennifer's just gonna pound down the wine, and then we're gonna get thrown in the shed. See, the single glass of wine. But it's obviously slower if you end up getting Mary. Weirdly enough, the world record strat for A ending doesn't even use this, because you want to get thrown into the shed almost immediately. Anyway, we take one drink, slam it down, and now we're knocked out, as you can see. Also, while we're waiting in the shed, it's going to be a long wait, but I'm going to just be text skipping everything here. I want to bring up that this is played on a, just an old-school SNES controller. It's on the Super Famicom. Using a mouse in this is, weirdly enough, not as good as using the SNES controller. It's very strange that that is the case. Anyway, I want to text skip this guy about... Ah, oh, I missed it. That's fine. I wanted to text skip him one more time, but I missed it. That's fine. I do want to make sure I have text skip ready coming up, though. After this discussion. Text skip isn't the easiest thing to land. It's um, frame perfect, but I want to make sure I can still have it ready before the next... More... There we go. I talked to him twice, and now we're going to be walking into him. It's a bit of a delay. There we go. Lots can run into the room, but instead of listening to Lot here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip all of her dialogue, because Lot takes too long to discuss. She'll keep talking like, oh, Jennifer, you're locked in jail. Let me break you out. However, we don't want to talk to Lot in any sense of the word. So we're just going to let Lot die immediately while skipping her text. There's like three things of text here, and this part of the game actually killed me when I first played it. You think you would want to hide, but you just want to bash Mary in the back of the head. Remember, wooden plank beats shotgun every time. Trust me. Trust me. And now I'm going to do another fun little skip. This is mostly used in a glitched version of the D ending, but I'm going to take the staff, and I am going to just skip over this box. Because I don't want to push the box out of the way. Doing minor actions is very inconvenient. But now on the upside as well, I did get the room upstairs dark once, so I don't have to go up the stairs, thank god. We'll actually save some time off of this. And now we can be downstairs. And that, that red person earlier was Lot. She is our friend who you must kill every run. If she doesn't die, you actually get one of the worst endings in the entire game. She is required to die. Anyway, now that we have the staff, I want to actually use the staff here. I have to learn how to use a staff, and the only way I'm looking at that is by having a mural. Remember guys, murals are educational, so you must look at the mural to learn. I always look at both just in case, and I look at it more than once, because at one point I looked at this mural, and it did not give me anything. Like, it said, okay, you don't know how to actually do the thing. But since Lot is dead, we have to read a book like a nerd. And I don't want to read. I know knowledge is power, but reading takes long amounts of time. Anyway, now we are finally going to be able to go into the end game, and around a 20 minute mark for the first two endings isn't too bad. I usually get about 20 minutes. And going into the end game is going to be uh, my favorite skip in the game, and it actually used to kill me during marathons. Uh, if you, I don't know if you guys uh, saw me last year. If you, any of you guys watched this last year, I actually did run this game. I did S ending. I got bumped up to all endings this time as an improvement. But I think during that run, I may have actually died during the uh, this next skip here. It is a difficult skip. Now I can get it every time. But back in the day, I was not able to get it, sadly. So what we're going to do is now go to the ceremony room. And as I mentioned, now we know how to learn how, we learned how to use the staff. And I'm pretty sure anyone would know how, but Jennifer, she tries her best. Jennifer is a trier. Fun fact about Jennifer, by the way, she's actually modeled off Jennifer Connelly. If you don't know who Jennifer Connelly is, she is the best. She was the star of a hit movie called Phenomena, which this game actually gets based off of. It's highly based off Italian horror. So if you like Italian anything, you like Clock Tower. If you like pizza, you like Clock Tower. If you like delis, you like Clock Tower. If you like clocks, guess what? You like Clock Tower. So now we're officially in the endgame, which is this cavern underneath everything. I'll go more into the actual story of everything later on. I just kind of wanted to get the tech out there earlier. 
So input buffering early. We're going to see a woman in a black robe. And this is indicating you need the perfume in a black robe. However, that takes too long to get. So I'm going to skip the dog barking because it's, too, it's faster to do so. And I'm going to push this text box to skip that dog. Normally, the dog would be very aggressive and it would try to kill me. However, I'm just going to use text to avoid the dog existing. And by skipping both text box, I, bo boxes, I both skip the dog killing me, and I also skip the text afterwards saying, Hey, we can't come back from the dog. I'm going to input buffer my whole way here, and we're going to be presented with the cradle under the stars. I'll leave this uh, big surprise here for you guys. Trust me, it's called the cradle under the stars and this is a big baby also known as dan the man this is big baby dan and you have an intense boss fight here where you must push the panic button which is b 80 times it's actually really easy i normally push in a rhythmic pattern and that's all you have to do a lot of people end up dying here because they don't realize you have to push the button at a moderate pace this isn't Resident Evil Remaster. You don't have to use uh, the stair skating. This isn't Mario Party. You just have to push it at a moderate pace and you'll live. Like that. It's very moderate. Just keep pushing it and you'll be fine. If I die here, that'd be hilarious, but I don't think I've ever died on this section. And now we're going to take out a giant baby like you take out all giant babies with kerosene. And now he's on fire and dead. We're going to be seeing that happen a lot, by the way. That baby is going to die to a few different things. And that Japanese text is, ah, ah. So, another reason why this is played in Japanese, by the way, is because this is exclusive. This was exclusively released in Japan. So, it, this is on the Super, uh, Super Famicom. I actually had to buy a Super Famicom to play this game. I own this game, by the way. It's the only Japanese game I've ever owned. I bought a Famicom exclusively for this. And this is the only version that actually is normal original version anyway in the elevator the final action you actually have to do for a ending is push the third floor button most endings in the game are gonna be on the third floor so the strategy is just hold up and mash the action button if i did everything right we'll be in the elevator and then if i did everything right again we'll make it to the top now in order to actually prove i got the a ending we must see it happen and we'll make sure we got the a ending and this will be the first ending Funny enough, out of the nine endings, three of them are canon. It's really your opinion on which one is canon, but it could be any of the three. And that's going to be A, B, and C. So this is one of three canon uh, endings. So enjoy. Bobby's going to give us a chase up the stairs, and we are going to take him down. Now, I'll kind of go more into it later, but let's just say activating the clock tower defeats Bobby. That's what we learned from a lot in literature, so we can actually get rid of him entirely. Now, this game did see uh, some Western media based on reproduction carts, and I want to say there was a remaster, or like, kind of like a mini remaster in the 90s. I mean, the game came out in 85, before Resident Evil, before Silent Hill, but it wasn't really too much in the West. Western um, civilization did not really get Clock Tower up until Clock Tower 2, which is no just known as Clock Tower 1, which is actually the splash art for Twitch. Anyway, we got the proper ending because we're walking over, and we're going to see our friend Laura. There she is. Look, guys, it's Laura. How sweet. It's Laura. Oh, nothing bad will happen to Laura, right? And look, it's Miss Mary, too. She's going to help us. She's going to give us more wine for our teenage high school party. <laughs> Yeet! And then Mary just yeets Laura off the top of the clock tower. <laughs> okay, so we did get the A ending, but I'm a stickler for watching Mary die. I believe the rule is you must watch Mary die every time. And since we did everything right, we're gonna get into a struggle. Now, the 40-year-old woman loses to a 14-year-old girl every time, but we're gonna use some assistance from Brandon Lee, aka The Crow. And now Mary is going to fall to her death. And that means we got the A ending. And now we have two of the nine endings. I'm hoping I get good luck for the next one, but we'll see. We have to go quick start again, because that's one of the ways to go. And this is what I'm trying to minimize. So I'm either going to be getting B, 
or I'm going to be getting F next. I'm hoping for F, but we'll see if we get F or B. A lot of the runs end up starting and getting killed in the beginning, because this is a 50-50 split. Anyway, now that you guys know most of the actual tricks of this game, I feel like you have a solid understanding. So I kind of go over the bit of the story now. Let's hope I don't get a reset. That's not a reset. That's lucky, actually. I got the West Wing key. But the story of Clock Tower goes something like this. What I want to do in Clock Tower, or the way the Clock Tower story goes, is you play as Jennifer Simpson, a.k.a. Jennifer Connelly. And playing as Jennifer, you and three other friends get adopted by Miss Mary from your orphanage. You're all about 14 years old. Um, Anna and Laura are the cool kids. Or Anna and Laura are the cool kids. Lot and you are the, uh, the not cool kids. But Miss Mary has something weird going on in the mansion, which is the Scissor Man here. Now they're up to something. You don't know quite. You don't quite know what they're up to yet. But you just know there is a murderous orphan running around, a giant baby underneath the mansion, and you also know that there is a, a, pretty much a guy in a garage. There's another twist we have not seen yet, but we'll be seeing it at least once during this. So we're going to be going again for the cycle of rooms. I'm hoping for the. I'm going to go for the normal cycle again. I don't check upstairs unless I'm going for world record in S ending exclusively. But the, it should be on one of the three bottom ones. If you wonder what is canon, by the way, in terms of the items, the staff is not even canon. The demon idol is the canon item because Clock Tower 1 and Clock Tower PS1 are, see, are I guess, related to each other. They're the only two in the series that are actually combined. So this is a blank door again. And can I get the library, please? We'll see if I get it. But yes, and as I mentioned earlier, with more Clock Towers lore, it's highly based on the movie Suspiria and Phenomena. Both of them, uh, Dario Argento. Very good director, by the way. I've been trying to find someone to talk with Suspiria with me the entire time, because the new movie just came out and it's all kinds of messed up. But nobody ever wants to watch it. I do a lot of horror stuff, so I kind of just geek out about Clock Tower all day. I have a Clock Tower shirt. I, I, I need to wear that more often. I kind of wish there was a face cam so I can show off my Clock Tower shirt, but it's the nature of things. Anyway, while we're searching the mansion and running away from Bobby, I'll let you know what, about Bobby. So Bobby is an, a young child about eight years old. He carries a giant pair of scissors and has very short shorts and is modeled after Angus Young, believe it or not. I don't know if he actually is, but he looks like Angus Young. I, that's my headcanon. I firmly believe he is Angus Young. And we have the library right here, which is good. And I also got the crow room on the bottom. So the crow room is right next to this, which we don't actually need. I'm hoping for dot dot dot. If we get staff, I'm going for B. If we get dot dot dot, I will go for F. So let's see which one I get. Please B dot dot dot. Oh my god, dude, that's unlucky. So we got the staff game again, which is fine. We're not going to be able to fully do that, but we can make this a bit quicker. And we just have to keep going. I actually should take the crow room item. Just because it will save me an item later on. We're probably going to go back to the shed as well. Because I have to go there anyway for the staff. It's usually better. One of my favorite parts about all endings, by the way, is it's a very on-the-fly category. You don't get the decision to go, okay, I'm taking this route and doing this thing. No, it's, okay, you got the staff, you better adapt to that. So I got a staff game once again. And going back into more of the story about Bobby, Bobby and Dan are twin brothers. That giant baby in the cellar. Also, I'm noticing one guy, I, I look at chat every now and again. I want to shout out that one guy who actually got the Susperia reference. Thank you. I do love Susperia. But yeah, Bobby and Dan are actually twins. They are twin brothers, believe it or not. Most people do not put that two and two together, but... You have to wonder, how is a, an, a giant baby... A twin with the tiny scissor man. I'm not too sure how. I, I, I know how. But most people can't really think about, hey, how are these two related? You learn more in the sequel, and I will I will reveal how they're related. I usually kind of string it together because this is a two-hour category. It's roughly about a hour and a half, two-hour category, depending on the luck here. Which, this is probably going to be about 140, if I'm guessing, to be honest. And since I'm downstairs, what I can do now is I'm hoping we don't die. I'm hoping we don't get drugged by Mary. 
I may be able to get the G ending right now. If I don't get it now, I can get it later in the game. But I can chain another ending into my B ending. I only do B because I don't really like B ending. It's a canyon ending, but it's one of my ah. least favorites in the entire game. Just because it's not really interesting. It's just very basic. It's not really, like, it's very anticlimactic. Like, an A ending, Laura gets yeeted off the tower. C ending, it's just a very fun chase. But A end, or B ending, it just, eh, it's not really a good one. I, I, I refuse to believe B is canon. So, I actually need to go upstairs to the pesticide. And then we get the long walk of the stairs once again. Clock Tower 2, weirdly enough, doesn't really take too much from Clock Tower 1. It just has some of the other ones here, which are like, okay, you have Jennifer again, you have the Scissor Man again, and then you have the Demon Idol again. Everything else is a very new thing in Clock Tower PS1 or Clock Tower 2. The entire Clock Tower series gets kind of weird when you think about it, because it goes from, okay, you have Jennifer Connelly getting chased by a Scissor Man, to many deviations and re-imagings. Like, for example, N Nightcry is technically a part of the series, but Nightcry is very bad. It is extremely bad if you've ever played it. I also have a world record in that game, so I'm allowed to say it's bad. I probably could have picked up the rope from up here, but we don't have to worry about it. And as you guys can see as well, going to the attic is one of the slowest things you can do. We don't want to be in the attic because it's really far away from everything else in the game. You actually have to come up here for one of the other West Wing keys, and the reason why I usually am worried about that first box I check in the game is, again, it's a 50-50 split if I get the key. If the key's not down there, it's in the attic, and I don't want to search the attic because that would take about six minutes, but I can just reset it like eight times and have a one in eight chance of beating that split and having better luck anyway, so it's better. Anyway, I'm gonna grab the key, and I'm not gonna drug myself in the kitchen. I'm actually gonna see if Mary can drug me again. Because if Mary doesn't drug me, I can squeeze in another ending. If Mary does drug me, I'm going to have to do something else. And I'm hoping at least one of these is a demon idol. I need the F ending to be a demon idol game. It's not even a choice at that point, it's a I have to have it or else it doesn't work. Mainly because it's RNG if we get staff. And it's just because Mary can spawn in that room immediately. The way you use the staff to get to the end game requires you to potentially face Mary. If you're facing Mary, it's not going to be too good. I didn't get the tech skip. Because she's going to drug you regardless unless you know the truth. But if you know the truth, you can't get the F ending. So it's a Demon Idol exclusive strat. And the Demon Idol just lets me do more fun things in general. There's still a few tricks I haven't even shown yet and a few rooms that we haven't done yet. But it has not come up yet, sadly. But that's fine. Uh, this is the third of the nine endings. We pop through ending... We get to ending eight very quickly, by the way, if anyone is curious. Like, ending eight comes very fast once you complete all the endings. I guess, in theory, that statement means ending nine would come very fast in that case. But we don't really have to worry about that. Anyway, I'm not going to drug myself quite yet. I want to make sure that I could potentially get thrown in by Mary or not. If I don't, I can get G ending, which should be helpful. Now, G ending can be fitted in if both of the survivors die. So there's three other friends in the game. You have Lot, Anne, and Laura. Anne and Laura are optional deaths. You don't have to kill Anne or Laura. One of them will almost always die. There's one case you can save all friends, and it gives you a glitched ending. But Lot will always die. However, you can have the option of saving Anne or Laura. However, Anne is way faster to kill than Laura, so I don't even kill Laura half the time. But I'm hoping we Mary does not show up, because then I can just do it the other way around. You can't get the car ending if Lot has died. It's a weird way that it works, and I'm not too sure why. I think it's at that point, Bobby just steals the car to drive down the street. You know, drive down Hollywood Boulevard. Although, weirdly enough, I think this game takes place in Norway, believe it or not. Of all places, this game takes place in Norway. It's a Japanese game that took place in Norway, of all places. I'm not entirely sure why they decided on Norway. Maybe Simpson is a Norwegian name. Either way, if you're Norwegian, you may enjoy that. Also, with that, I can actually get the G ending. And to get the G ending, you, there's a few ways of doing it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the knight in shining armor. Guys, it's our knight in shining armor. He's going to protect us from the scissor man. He's going to protect us. Oh, Laura's dead.
We're rip, Laura. I guess the knight in shining armor is not going to protect us. Well, we can't say we didn't try. I mean, but Laura is now officially dead. But we need Laura dead because now I can actually get the G ending, which is going to require me to run back downstairs. However, I actually did get the key. So now I think about it. Wait, I, yeah, I definitely grabbed the key. I'm going to do F ending. Wait a minute. Why am I doing... Yeah, I'm going to switch the routing a little bit. Wait a minute. Why am I doing B ending when I can do F ending? It's faster anyway. So we didn't actually get Mary, meaning I can just get out of here. This is perfect. Okay. So I'm going to change the routing a little bit here. So far, you've done A and H. I'm going to do G, and then I'm going to do F, because F is going to be very good. Remember, right now we have two of the endings done. Our third one is about to happen. And the reason why is now Anne is dead, and Laura is now dead as well. And when Anne and Laura are both dead, Lot is always dead. She's in a constant state of dead. She was born dead, so she counts as a third friend being dead at this point in time. And when all your friends are dead, you have no option but to get in the car and leave the building. So I'm going to do this again. Go back to the car, which is still here. Not going to use the ham here. I'm going to use the key here again. And the way this ending pans out, we're not going to watch the entire thing because the credits are very long. You just have to escape and make sure both friends have died, which the glass on the ground indicates Anne is dead, and we just saw Laura die. Meaning, the way this one ends is it's really anticlimactic. Mary just comes to your house at night and strangles you in your sleep. It's a way it goes. Anyway, this is ending three. G ending. It's another car ending, and the real ending happens after the credits, but usually it can be verified just by escaping. You know if the friends have died, it's very easy to tell if you got the ending or not. So that's the way the ruling normally goes. And heading continue again, and I mentioned since I have the staff in the method of using the staff, since I got the key, I can actually complete the game entirely. Although I still have not fought the doll yet, which I'll still need to do, but this will definitely be faster and even more reliable, because now, I, even if I get a staff, I don't have to worry about this. I can use the staff for better endings. Or the demon idol for better endings. Now that we get the key for down here, I can know how do you do the... Wait a minute. Uh, but... I remember why I can't do this. Wait, I never... Yeah, I never... We are good. We are good. I keep forgetting, like, going to this room without Mary is always a bit strange. So... What I'm going to do is talk to that, talk to this again, and then leave the room. We're not talking to the book this time, because the book would give me the truth. And knowing the truth is not allowed here. Like I mentioned, all the endings have different parameters. For example, A ending is you must find out the truth from the shed, save the crows, have one friend alive by the end of the game, and know the truth about Bobby. This category I was doing right now, F ending, requires me to know nothing and free nobody. And this means you're a bad person. It means you found nobody at all. And we're gonna have our favorite thing in the game, stairs. The hot stair action. If I can borrow a trick from SM64, that would apply to a lot of my games. I said the same thing during my GDQ run in Silent Hill because they had a long staircase. Can I borrow that trick here so I can just leap up these stairs? Jennifer doesn't really know the sense of urgency when it comes to stairs. If she's not on stairs, she's perfectly urgent in running. I mean, I understand she's wearing a dress. She's wearing, I think those are flats. I can't really see her shoes. She's not wearing heels. She's not wearing heels because she's smart. But we are escaping now, and we have to do that doll fight again. Which the doll fight is weird. Most, it's, I think it's about it's manipulatable about seventy percent of the time. The strategy I do works roughly about seventy percent. Sometimes it works, and then mo like very infrequently will it not. It is a bit unfortunate, but it definitely does vary. Anyway, while we're waiting, I can kind of... Since we're going to be chopping down a few endings right now, um, I'm doing F ending, which is probably one of the more important ones in the entire game, which you'll see. What I'm going to do is tell you a bit more about Bobby. I think Bobby's actual inspiration... It comes from three movies. Bobby's inspiration comes from Susperia, Phenomena, but it comes from one more movie that's like... It's like some kind of harvesting movie, or... It's like the Scarecrow Man, because it's about a movie that a guy kills someone with scissors, which is very strange. But I have not seen that movie personally. I've seen Suspiria and Phenomena, but I haven't seen that one. But I know that's a thing. Some people also rumor that the Scissor Man comes from real-life killings that happen in England, but that one's a bit weirder. There's also a fun glitch that happened with the doll here, that if she's facing me, I can run through the door and just face-tank the entire doll hit. But we don't have to worry about that. 
We're going to keep doing the input buffering, which I'm very... This is probably the one, like, one of two things I've actually routed into this. Input buffering in the text skip. A fun story about the speedrunning history of this game. Before I got in, um, S ending was the main category I did. All ending is more of a category I pioneered, but the big category in this game is S ending. Before me, S ending was at a 1524. With me, it is currently at a 12, I think 19 now. And 1219 is much faster in a, you know, a 15 minute speed run that is also a point and click. The things that I found were one, input buffering, and then two, I was the first person in America to discover the text skip. And I say in America because I discovered it on my own, but then we found out there's a TAS that had all the strategies barring input buffering. Input buffering is actually the one thing I somehow did manage to find, which I'm really proud of that. I'm actually really proud that I managed to find input buffering. It's kind of surprising. Anyway, now that we know the truth... Alright, well, the, the truth about the staff, anyway. We don't know the entire truth. I can use the staff, and we can go down. We're also using the ham, because it's very important for the rest of the game here. And we're going to do the dog skip once again. If we have time afterward, by the way, I think we may. I can show off a few extra glitches that are pretty fun to do. First things first, go all the way down. And what I want to do is go immediately to Dan. Dan's going to be the key here. Like I got mentioned, there's only so many things you have to do to beat the game in the fastest way possible. Without going to the car or glitching out the game, this is the fastest ending you could potentially get, the F ending. Now, the reason why F is the fastest is you don't have to do anything but get to the elevator. So again, we skip the dog barking because the dog barking takes a long time. Use this text box here. One, two. That's called the double dog skip, kind of like double dog daring. Jennifer will keep running regardless if you click it there, but if you click it, it's good. It's a very good thing if you can click that. More input buffering and allow me to educate you more about Dan. So Dan is a part of a ritual or part of the whole mansion here, which is the cradle under the stars. Since we can't read Japanese or you can't read it at the speed it's going because I'm skipping a lot of the text. Say if you could read Japanese, you can't really skip text if I've skipped it. You can't really read text if I've skipped it. So Bobby here is a bit of a monstrosity if you could not tell. Or Dan here. I both of them. Both of them. Both of them are monstrosities if you cannot tell. But Dan here is actually cursed, as is Bobby. The entire clock tower is cursed with demonic rituals. They said that, both, I guess, Dan and Bobby were born under a red moon, which means that he, he's a... Well, let's look at this. Jennifer's probably like, what, 5'3"? Like, the average height of a chick's probably about, like, what, 5'5"? Five, five? Jennifer's probably average height for 14-year-old. She's probably like 5'3 or so. Bobby's towering over her. Our Dan is towering over here. This is like a nine foot baby. Now, most babies are not nine feet. Believe me, I've checked. The only nine foot baby you'll see is in Zombies Ate My Neighbors. But that's a titanic toddler at that point who can shrink. This baby is nine feet without being, you know, in Zombies Ate My Neighbors. So, also kerosene again. He never gets old watching a baby get covered in kerosene. There's obviously some curse here that's preventing him from shrinking down to normal size. Think about that for a moment while we go into the elevator, because we're about to end F ending. This will be the fourth ending of the run, guys. We're almost halfway there. Can you believe it? You only have to do it almost halfway. I have a feeling we're going to end up with a, uh, well, halfway right now. We're about, what, 40 minutes in? 40 more? That'll be pretty good, right, guys? So we're going to go to the elevator, and this should work, right? We're going to go in the elevator, we're going to go to the third floor, we're going to stab Mary, we're going to throw Bobby off the cliff this time, Laura's going to get yeeted, even though her dead body's not up there anymore. We're good. We're going to be very good right now. Oh! Oh, wait a minute. That's blood. That's also the F ending. Okay, guys. I think round two is an order. We got the F ending, but I'm not going to die in the elevator like a chump. F for Jennifer for her dead body. We're going to continue this. Now, what did I forget? Um, I... Did I forget the dog? Did I, no, I didn't forget the dog. Although, I can do a little bit of a glitch. It's a bit risky, so I'm not going to do it yet. If we have time afterward, I can see if I can show it off. But I remember, we, we never talked a lot. Lot never died, did she? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run up the lot, and instead of being a good, a good friend and consoling her dying body, I'm just going to text skip it and run away. Bye, lot. Thank you for the vital information. I got to leave you now. 
Now that we know the truth from Lot and Lot's officially dead, now we can make it into the elevator. You can't go in the elevator if Lot never dies. It's either you or her, and it's yeet or be yeeted. And she was yoked. So now we can make it into the elevator, and this will be the next ending. Okay, guys, round two. You know what? We're gonna go to the third floor. We're gonna throw Mary off the cliff, or the clock tower. Bobby's gonna get taken down again. He's gonna get, he's gonna jump off the cliff. We're gonna be good here, guys. See, we're in the elevator. In the elevator. And up to the third floor, right? Up to the third floor. We're gonna be good. We're gonna go up there. We're gonna teach those clocks a lesson. I'm gonna knock Bobby's clock out. Watch this. Uh, why the elevator stop? Oh, no, wait. Oh, no. Oh, no. And then Bobby pops in the elevator this time. Instead of F, that is an E. As in E. That is the E ending. Um, that's why I got the E ending. You know what? Let's try it again. I think we can do this again. We can do this again, right? Okay, the third floor killed me. Let's try the second floor this time. I shouldn't die, right? I think we'll be fine. I'm not gonna die. I'm gonna go up there. I'll throw Mary off the clock tower. And I'm going to throw Bobby off the clock tower as well. They're all going to be taken down. I'm going to do some input buffering and go faster than us all. I see we survived this time, guys. We got it. We are going to live. Jennifer will make it to 15. Hey, look, it's Miss Mary. But wait a minute. We never learned anything about Miss Mary, did we? Um, well, you know what? We're going to give Miss Mary a nice big hug. She is our adoptive mother, by the way. So we'll give her a nice hug, and she's gonna hug us in the shoulder with a dagger. And we're dead! But instead of E, it is now D. And that is the D ending. So, in addition to that, what I just did is called F-E-D skip. I got three endings in about, what, two minutes? And the reason that works is because the F ending makes the continue spot in, in front of the elevator. E ending makes it in the elevator, but D ending will make it on the second floor always. So in that case, I was able to get three endings at once, and I am now at six endings. We have three more left to go. We are about 66% of the way done with this. In the old days, you would have to do every ending like an animal. However, I found routing with continues that allow you to do more than the basic endings. And I got another key. So, we're locked into this one regardless, and we'll have a bit more luck here. And now we are locked into number 7. And don't you worry, all the rest of the endings in the game are going to be good endings. Poor Jennifer here is not going to die anymore. And we'll teach them a lesson in what we do here. And sadly, we're not going to be able to watch- I'll show the Laura death later. Um, over here is another death of Laura. However, every single death here doesn't have an and death, because it was faster. In addition, more I think about it, that wasn't just F-E-D, that was G-F-E-D. So I did four endings in one playthrough. That is a lot of endings, by the way. Normally, I do three, two, two. However, that was a four, two, which is rather nice. And I can pass Bobby. That skip also just takes a bit of work getting used to, but it's not that hard once you do it. That was actually the first speedrunning skip I've ever done ever before really i do a lot of speed runs in general and this is always my favorite skip in the entirety of all my games just because that's the first one i learned by myself like i i do like 49 different speed games and that was my first one i ever did that pretty much started my big thing on speed games i also wanted to get another game ready for the marathon i didn't have it in time sadly so on the upside we do a clock tower which is always a blast I'm hoping this time we actually end up getting the library demon idol. I have not had the demon idol once, but on the upside, it's not going to be faster to take a different route, which I no longer have to worry about the truth the other way. We can start doing the truth the faster way. So I mentioned something called the truth and that we cannot handle it, but also that there are more than one ways of getting the truth. The other way is by far faster, but you're not allowed to do that in certain aspects because it's a bit slower. In theory, if I get the staff, I can still go the other way, but S ending will require me getting the other one. We still have B, C, and S. I'm gonna go for B next, because I don't like B, and I'd rather have it over with. B ending is honestly just the most boring in the entire game. And I got this room, which good to know. So far from the bathroom in this room, I hope this is the library. 
And if you guys are wondering as well, why do we speedrun this on the Super Famicom? Because this game had multiple releases. It had Super Famicom, it had PlayStation 1, actually, and it had a PC remaster. The first fear is the PlayStation and PC version, but it's not very good because it doesn't let you do any of the skips. It's a great casual game, but it's not a very good speedrun, sadly. Anyway, Bobby gets downed once again with knowledge. And dot dot dot, please. Oh my god, that was three in a row? Well, good thing I started doing B ending, and good thing I know where the thing here thing is here. That is all staff so far. I've not even seen a single demon idol. That is rather upsetting, actually. Not a single demon idol. That is very unlucky, by the way. That normally does not happen. I normally at least get get at least one at this point in time. Like, whenever I do world record attempts for this game, it's a lot of resetting. At one point, I resetted the game 80 times to get back one of my world records. Someone took it from me, and I had to reset the game 80 times to get it back. It was rather sad. It is a rather sad state of living. But now we can actually go do the staff route again, which we're going to be going, we're getting thrown in the shed once again. But for you guys, actually, since we have, we have a decent amount of time, um, each ending is going to take me about roughly... Let's see, right now I'm at a 50 minutes. It's about 50. Meaning, I'm going to show up a glitch here because I have time. Uh, this runs already about 5 minutes, or this category is about 5 minutes in. So, I should have enough time in general. Yeah, we're going to do it. And my strategy here is, I'm going to show you guys something called the reverse dog skip. It makes A ending faster, believe it or not. Oh wait, I can't get down there because I don't have the... Eh, never mind. Have, I'll show you guys Reverse Dog if I manage to get the Demon Idol, but if I, if I don't get the Demon Idol, I can't show you guys Reverse Dog. I guess I can just do it next time I'm down there and I think about it. We'll do that. We'll do that. I keep forgetting the staff is the thing blocking me, not the doll key. When you play this game so many times, you just stop thinking about staffs. If I, 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 swear, I swear to God, whenever I go to like a museum or anything, if I see a staff, it actually scares me. I, I, get, I get frightened when I see staffs in that, the real world. Like, if you ever pull out a staff on me, I'd probably be more terrified than a knife. It's quite terrifying, to be quite honest. At least all the dolls have been good so far. The doll can last up to 30 seconds. I mean, she has a killer mixtape, by the way. So it's always worth fighting this doll. Also, fun fact, the doll is also French. A French doll in Norway. See, the Barrows family likes to travel. Now, if you're wondering who the Barrows family is, that's Mary, Bobby... Um, Mr. Barrows in the shed. If you're wondering who that crazy guy in the shed was, it's Mr. Barrows. You know, the owner of the mansion who Mary just threw into the shed. <laughs> Quite a sad state of life, really. But we're going to go back to the shed and we're going to pay Mr. Barrows a visit. I'm hoping we can at least get the demon out at one point because then I might be able to do it that way, but we'll see. I'll have to get the Demon Idol in order to show off Reverse Dog Skip, because it's funny if you can get the entire thing, but it's a, an occurrence that only works with RNG, sadly. Like, if you don't have it, it doesn't work, sadly. And the skip's fun because it glitches out the game in a way you wouldn't expect it to, and it makes A ending much quicker. It's normally an A ending exclusive, but I'm able to do it in a different ending, because in that case it would be faster. Also, since I'm already here, I get an extra item with the rope, because I need an item for the bottom. Uh, in order to just input buffer at the end of the game, I want an extra item, and it's pretty good to have. So let's get out of here. And let's take this moment to talk a little bit more about the family. So as I mentioned, Miss Mary birthed two twin, technically demon children, since they were born underneath a red moon. And it's actually canon that, I think, I'm pretty sure it's Dan. Dan bit off a man's hand. So that is how Dan grew up to be, be big and strong. The man who delivered the babies, Dan bit off his hand. So the man is currently handless and somewhere in the world. We don't know where, but somewhere in the world, there's a handless man running around. And Dan has a taste for flesh. So, going back into it, I want you guys to think about what the overarching plot of Clock Tower may be. There's a lot going on in this game underneath the wings, and... If it's the English version, you'll be able to tell more, but in Japanese, we play it because it's faster as well. The text is just quicker in most games in Japanese, so it works better that way in addition. Anyway, let's see if I can get some brewskis and get thrown in the shed on my own this time, because it is faster if I can do it, and it would be much more ideal. It's also just funny to watch Jennifer drink random alcohol and just get knocked out in the kitchen. You have to wonder, did Bobby find her or did Mary find her? And why did they just put her in the shed? 
I also got the pesticide text skip, which just skips the text after it that says, hey, you got a key. We also don't have to worry about the cockroaches attacking us. If you forget to use the pesticide here, you have to do the walk of shame out of the room where you're covered in roaches. Now, you can be a filthy animal and be covered in cockroaches, or you can actually just get the pesticide, you know, like a human being. So the next step is talk to the cabinet to find some brewskis. Uh, see, we're either going to find, let's see, top of the line one, Carlos Rossi. We're going to find some absolute nice medicine. I'm hoping it's Carlos Rossi. We all want some brewskis. I did not get the brewskis. I got medicine once again. Why do I keep getting medicine? You know, I, I got some interesting luck here and some interesting, like, all the movement's been fine. Like, the key on the upside's been nice, which can be one of the worst things. But I, I've gotten all staffs and all bad RNG. I'm hoping S ending is like the world record. You know what? If we get into S ending and we haven't gotten a single demon idol, I'm gonna try the world record strat out. At least I got one room that's fine. Am I gonna get thrown in the shed? I did not get thrown in the shed. Thank you. Oh, come on. Go, go back. Go back. Thank you. And yeah, we need to get back out of the room. There we go. And let's re enter the room. So one of my least favorite parts is if Mary doesn't spawn. It's a 50-50 chance that she does. At one point, actually during a marathon run, I had it so Mary did not spawn eight times. I tried it eight times before she spawned. This is two. If we want to watch Laura die again, by the way, we can just open that. You guys want to watch Laura die again? Poor Laura. I don't know if we want to watch her die. It'd be sad. You also have to wonder, why, was, why were they a bunch of cockroaches in the meat fridge? What kind of animal leaves cockroaches? Three! Wow, this is unlucky. If I don't get the last one, I may as well just go a different route. I think I already talked to the table, right? I, I'm pretty sure I did. I definitely did. Yeah, I know I did. It's the first thing I do if I ever go in the dark room. Mary, please come. Mary, what are you doing? Mary, can you cooperate? Mary, like, you know, for a bloodthirsty killer, she's not doing a lot of bloodthirsty killing right now. I'm pretty sure she's getting drunk with Bobby in the shed. I want to get drunk in the shed, Mary. Throw me in. Actually, if it doesn't work, we'll just go for the other ending. Okay, we'll, we'll go for the other strategy. It may even be faster than I think about it. Let me just go upstairs now that I have the key and we can do the entire thing here. So we're going to have to go the other way around. Um... It's again, it's a 50 50 chance for Mary. I had six. Wow. Six times. That was brutal. I'm not even going to go for that many. That was a lot. That was pretty excessive. And it's not a thing like, oh, Mary doesn't spawn here. It's entirely random chance if she does. Sometimes it's always immediate. She can actually double spawn in the room, believe it or not. You can find her after you find the truth. And then it becomes a thing to where it's just, okay, she'll try stabbing us and you must run away. But. We can just do another way of finding the truth, and this way works a bit better, and we can probably kill a bit of time on this. I'll leave it up to... You know, I'll leave it up to you guys. I'll check chat for a moment. I usually don't check chat during marathons, but I'll check it right now. Would you guys want to see an extra cutscene we don't normally watch? So, the cutscene is about a minute 30. It's all in Japanese, and just features Jennifer holding a dead body. If you guys would like to watch that, we definitely can. But we'll see. We have to find out the truth from here on how to use the staff, and we can fully get out. But I have to go the other way to figure out the truth. Which will be over here. And let me find out this. Luckily, Lot isn't dead, so I don't have to read the books. But now we're actually out, so that's good. And we'll do more input buffering and get all the way back. And we actually can watch another trick that I haven't done yet. And it's probably one of my favorite tricks in the entire game, because it shows the power of Jennifer. And I can't believe it's been already an hour into the run and I haven't been able to show up this trick yet, but it normally comes up really fast, like surprisingly fast. But depending on the luck you get, it either does or doesn't. Luckily, my estimate accounts for this kind of luck, but it's very unlikely this gets world record, sadly. But since we are on the second floor, we'll keep going. Okay, looks like we're watching that cutscene. I'll, I'll talk over it and I'll give the full gist of the story while we're doing that. But we'll, we'll, we'll see on everything on that. We're going to keep running all the way down with input buffering. And while we're doing this, I'm going to elaborate on the power of Jennifer. You see, when you're growing up and you're a teenager, specifically if you're a 14-year-old girl, you have a power to levitate, as you'll see. I'm going to teach you how the power of levitation. 
So this wooden board is normally needed across this path, but what I'm going to do instead is this. This is called hole skip. By abusing the text of the hole, you can skip it entirely, and it's faster than having to put the plank down. Jennifer is 14, and she does not really take her time, or she really just takes her sweet time moving things, as you'll see in this room right here. We're going to take forever moving this box. It's a long time moving the box, by the way. It is a very long time. And this is actually the ideal route you want, because it's still faster than Mary's side. But the issue is, we don't want to normally have to find Mary. So this is going to be faster here. And if we try skipping as much of Jennifer's actions as possible, so the next one is going to be right here at the pipe. I am going to push this. Here we go. Text skip the pipe, and then the pipe will also allow me to skip the text by having the text skip up. Jennifer admires her work of blowing up the wall. And we're not going to go for it. I don't want to listen to Jennifer's admiration. We're just going to blow it up. That room is also really risky, believe it or not. I never have any issues in this room because I've been doing this game for years now. But we don't have to worry about it. I also get to do something called a bag skip. Normally, to leave this room, you only have to talk to the bag. Because this is one of the ways of finding out the truth. The truth triggers once you talk to the bag, which I just did. However, you guys wanted to watch a cutscene, so here's your cutscene. This is called The Dead Dad. Remember how I mentioned there was a man... A man just uh, running around with one hand. This is the man running around with one hand. So we're going to caress the skeleton for about a minute and a half. And we're going to get the full story of Clock Tower. Hmm, that might not be good. I hope my time's not cut off. It might be. That might be better. I don't know if Clock Tower... I hope that the timer's not cut off. I just saw on my end it may be cut off. But we'll see. I may need to re-edit that. That's going to be kind of bad if it is. Um, let's see. One hour. Oh, that timer's cut off. That should be bring it back in. That should bring it back in. Let me see if I can shrink it. There we go. A little bit of shrinking. Alright, we're good. There we go. Uh, I had a feeling that timer was going to uh, get cut off there. But yeah, it's just all Japanese sex on dead body. If you're wondering what it's saying right now, this is Jennifer's dead dad. And Jennifer's dead dad is one of the ways of finding out the truth, because Jennifer's dead dad actually delivered the, uh, the, the, uh, the twins. And as I mentioned, Dan bit off the dad's hand. Oh wait, one of the timers still being cut off from what I can see. Is it? I don't know. I have to keep checking. I'm currently checking the timer because I'm worried, but yeah, just enjoy the dad dialogue, Jennifer holding a body and waiting. We don't always have to watch this, but we'll see. And now I can leave the room. Funny enough, you, you can leave the room right when you get there. There we go. Okay, that looks better. That looks a lot better. Just making sure that was better. I was kind of worried in general here that that was going to be kind of bad. But as I mentioned, this is a dangerous room because Bobby can spawn in this box at any point. If you're not fast in this room, Bobby will spawn. You must avoid him, which isn't good. So now that I have everything, I can actually get to the end of the game. And since we can use the staff here, I'm going to do that skip from earlier, modify it, and skip over the hole. So we do it again on the way back. You can normally have to use a rope to get down or the plank of wood, but we don't have either of those. So use an item to keep going, and we'll keep input buffering as well. And we're finally going to be able to go to the bottom. Which, I'm going to go do the lots, uh, just skipping a lot again. I'm going to do the dog skip again. But I'll show one more trick off just because I'll show off the basics of it. I'm probably going to be able to show off the entire thing because I don't have a demon idol and it would likely take too long. But I'm going to show off the reverse dog skip. Because what reverse dog, it's not really going to be necessary here. Just we have time. And I think the marathon is really early so I want to get closer to estimate. So, I'm going to put the staff in, and again, the dog sips are the hardest tricks in the game. When most people start the game off, they actually die a lot to the dog. It's a very difficult skip, especially on emulator. Emulators are normally allowed in this game, however, I do, I'm do. i one of the only runners who does original hardware. But when I was doing this on emulator a lot, it was very hard to just fully survive. It was not an easy thing to do, just because the dog timing is very awkward. However, what you can also do is in addition to skipping the dog one way, you can skip it the other way. 
Now that's normally used in A ending because it allows you to backtrack and it's faster than actually going to the shed entirely, which is rather nice. However, it's more of just an impressive kind of thing, so we'll do that. Again, input buffering can be faster. Mary comes here. And to show you guys what I'm normally skipping, you'll see the dog bark. I normally skip that barking because it pauses me. I don't want that pause. And we'll see if I get it. One, two. I'm going to keep doing this, input buffer, and get rid of lots text. Because having lots text takes a long time. Jennifer is normally a very caring friend, but we don't want her to be caring. We want her to ignore lots. So the way the skip's going to work is I need to go back to the dog. Obviously. There is text in the game that says you can't go back, the smell of perfume has worn off, you cannot fool the dog again. This is the text. And I actually did get the area I wanted. So the way it's going to work is I'm going to do this. And that's the reverse dog skip. You kind of just have to push the button as much as possible, and then you can reverse dog skip there. It's a very difficult trick to do, and that was frame perfect. That was literally double frame perfect. Because not only must you skip the dog, you need to skip the you can't go back text. In the can't go back text, you have a very small window to get it. At one point, I was dying on every other attempt on that trick. I'm kind of surprised I got that first try, by the way. I normally die to that, and then you see me die from the dog from behind, which somehow that happens. I'm not too sure how the dog can murder you from behind, but it's a set trigger on the dog that will just straight up kill you. Also, something I haven't done yet is you can actually input buffer this room by doing a tech skip here and moving it back and forth. You can actually make Dan go faster and bring up your inventory. I'm going to use the rope on Dan because it's funny. Some of you are all wondering right now, why is Dan a massive baby? So, let's think about this for a moment. Jennifer and her friends are brought to a killer mansion to be murdered by Bobby, also known as the Scissor Man. Jennifer has been adopting these orphans for a while. She does, it's in the story that she does it multiple times to many different groups of orphans. Bobby kills the orphans, and Dan is pretty big there. Dan's a pretty big guy. What could Dan be uh, doing here? Now, if you have a smart guess here, if you're a good guesser of horror lore, Dan here is actually covered in orphan meat. You see big old Dan here? This is actually all orphan meat. Dan is really about the size of Bobby. Again, they're twins. But Dan is wearing a giant orphan meat costume that we cover in kerosene. Now, if you don't understand about orphan meat, is orphan meat is flammable. And that's how you're supposed to know to throw kerosene on him. Funny enough, the song playing right now is actually called Kerosene as well. Anyway, right now I can either get the C or B ending. I'm gonna go for B just because I like showing C off at a later point in time. Kind of save a best for last kind of thing. And I want to go to the third floor once again. And B ending is what happens if you only find out the truth. Um, doesn't matter how many friends die, but you don't save a crow. So if you don't save the crows and you go to the third floor, you get B ending. That's really the main difference here. It doesn't matter how you find out the truth. All that matters is that you were not a good person and you did not save animals. Weirdly enough, this game has a very big pro-animals message. Like, a very big, like, vegetarian, don't eat meat message. I mean, like, there's so much orphan meat in the game and you see dead animals. Like, Jennifer actually just stops eating meat in the sequel. It's kind of weird. And I feel like a lot of horror games also have that aspect, but it's kind of strange. I'm not sure why. Anyway, in B ending, what ends up happening is we have an action at the end. A ending is the only category that it actually ends on the elevator button press normally uh, for the main good ones. So we're going to have a panic event at the end of the end of the area here, and we're going to kill her. I kind of mentioned earlier as well that the clock tower stops Bobby. You have to wonder, why does the clock tower stop Bobby? Because Bobby here is chasing his full healthy, but you know from the first ending of the game that we got, or the second ending, I should say, Bobby kind of just jumps off the clock tower, as you'll see here. So pushing the switch to the clock tower actually does something called time will cause adherence. That's what we learned from the books, and that's what we learned from the lot. And the idea of time will cause adherence means, or time will stop adherence, or something to that effect. The general idea is currently the mansion itself is in a stasis of time. Now if you saw Bobby there, his face was covered in tumors. Bobby should have died on immediately. But because Jennifer Connelly here was able to start the clock again, Bobby immediately has like seven different strokes and dies. Bobby is confirmed dead and now Mary is... I don't know, she might still be alive right now, I'm not too sure. Ah, she's dead, she, she's definitely dead. And that was number seven. We have two more endings, and at most, they'll take about 20 minutes each. 
at most. Like, one of them should have the demon idol, hopefully. But that's the main story of this game. And as I mentioned, there are three canon endings as well, A, B, and C. You can see why I don't like B. It's very anticlimactic. She just dies to electricity. It's not a very good one. But we're going to be doing the C ending right now. Also, that orange glitch in the bottom left, that just happens every now and again. It's an original hardware error. I don't know why it happens. It doesn't affect the game, but it is a thing. At the very least, my keys have been good all day, but this is going to be the first dot, dot, dot. Hey, I got a key again. All right, never mind. Maybe my luck has been very bad in the staffs because I've gotten keys every run. Like, the staff, I at least I can play on. The key, you can't play on. It's kind of weird. But since we got the key again, this will be good. And you don't even search most of the rooms in this game. And like I mentioned, since the game is randomly generated, you actually miss out a lot of the rooms in this game. Like, in the game, you don't have to go to many of the rooms in the speedrun because there's only a few things you need to do. And, and you have those things. The game wants you to hide from Bobby, but you kind of just beat him when you can just, you know, run past him entirely, which works pretty well. Again, the Bobby skip was discovered very early on, and it's a very nice skip, because you just avoid Bobby entirely. Normally, if you run into Bobby, the man kills you, but we kind of circumvent most of the actual aspects of this game. There are rooms in this game we don't even see. There's events we don't even see. In this game, you can die in just so many different ways, we don't even notice most of them. Like, one of the funniest ones in the game happens in a room we don't even enter. So, well, you may see that later. Also, another fun fact, you can actually skip the trip there, but it's it takes more time to skip it than actually doing it, so it's not worth skipping the trip, the trip at all. And we may see that later if I have time. I'll ask um, Fiesel and all them just to see how much time we have at the end of this. But if we have a, a front underestimate, I'll definitely show off an extras category that we do. It's a very fast one, about two minutes. Hey, first try library. This is actually good. This would be a good run in general. This is good luck. And now that I said it's good luck, I'm going to get yet another staff. But like I mentioned, we're doing C ending, so I may have a better route this time in C ending. Anyway, let's see. Can it be dot dot dot, please? Please dot dot dot. Thank you, game! The first Demon Idol game. I get to show you guys how the game actually runs in the actual routing. Because normally, we don't want the staff because it takes long, but as I mentioned earlier, Jennifer natively knows how to use a demon idol. So this was extremely lucky, actually. And now I can continue going as well. This is very good. This is the first ending I've had. I'm like, hey, this is a good one. This is actually a very good ending, in fact. So the plan here is we're going to go to the dad once again. And you'll see why the dad is faster and why we need to do whole skip. So as you know, normally we don't have the items. We don't normally have items right now. I've not picked up a single item in the entire game, as you may know. I currently have nothing, as you'll see in my inventory. I push the inventory button, nothing pops up. So in order to do this, you must abuse the text on the ground next to this hole, which it's frame perfect, by the way. You need to push both of them in succession very quick, but it's a fun trick. And now we actually get the demon idol. And as I mentioned earlier, the demon idol is much, much faster. Because you get an item after about two minutes. So it's, uh, I think, about a three-minute item specifically. And we can input buffer. We can do a lot here. However, even in this room, I'm still going to want to grab the rope here for another item. I'm not going to be freeing the crows in this ending because this is C ending and they don't require crows. But we are going to be grabbing it on the way out. C ending is especially risky, by the way, because... The more time you spend in this room, this box can potentially activate. It's supposed to be a jump scare, however, when you're fast enough, you're fine. It's a 50-50 chance of it's bad. Like, the runner can actually die if you're on, like, good pace, if you do this wrong. And world records are actually lost in this room a lot of the time. I actually choke in this room a lot, surprisingly, to this pipe. Because this is four seconds of time save. I've counted this all before. This pipe alone is four seconds. Now, in the category is normally about like 11 to 12 minutes for a world record. Four seconds is kind of massive. So, skipping that is very nice. And we can use the demon idol to enter the room. And you guys remember how we watched that dad cutscene? Uh, remember that dad cutscene from the last run? We don't actually have to do that. One of the big discoveries in this game is this dad cutscene takes a minute and a half. I'm not going to do that. A minute and a half is boring in a speedrun to actually do. So I tech skip the bag, and I immediately leave. And this is the equivalent of walking into your dad's room, stealing his wallet, and then going, See it, Hops, I'm leaving to the mall. 
And now we're out, and we just discovered the truth in 12 seconds. If you're wondering why I like the demon idol in comparison to the staff, you just saw it right there. I can now go to the end game once I beat the doll. That's how fast a demon idol run is, and this is why there's such a big variance of time in these runs. We can literally go to that end game. You know that area of the game I've been trying to get to the entire time? We can do that now. I don't have to go to Mary. I don't have to get no staff. I don't have to learn how to use the staff. We natively know the demon idol. In fact, I can do a trick off screen. I'm going to imp a buffer. Do the whole skip off screen. I hope I did it. I did it. And then we leave the room. And the more you do off screen, the faster it goes. However, the one thing you surprisingly will do each time... Like, every time. You don't have to talk to your dad every time, but you have to talk to the stall every single time. Which works weirdly enough. Also, another trick you can do if you didn't come here earlier is you can actually text skip the little thing here. Whenever I watch people play this game casually, because it's the only way for me to relive this game's glory, when you speedrun a game, I imagine some of you may know what it's, um, you may speedrun games, you watch a lot of speedruns, you can't really relive the hype of a game the first time you play it. So, I like play watching you play this game casually a lot, so if you stream this game, I am likely to show up. Oh, I didn't get the fast doll, by the way. Let me get that first, and I'll kind of keep going. Also, I get to show the other doll fight. So watch. Oh, wait, hold on. So, watch, and... I face tank the doll's hit. Because that is a fun glitch. I don't want to get knocked down like a chump. I'm going to face tank the doll, because Jennifer is braver than a French doll. I taught her an important lesson in existing, and her answer is don't. But like I mentioned, a lot of people get stuck in that room because they don't notice there's a key there. And that's the key to the ceremony room, by the way, which is the end game room. And most people playing this casually miss that entirely. I know when I did this game casually, I didn't even know what to do. I think I barely made it to the West Wing. This game is pretty difficult to do in general because there are so many rooms to search. There are certain areas of the game we don't even watch, as I mentioned. So it is kind of fun noticing all this. And I spent a lot of time on a obscure Japanese point and click, but I'm happy with that actually. So let's keep going and as I mentioned before We have the demon idol and the demon idol will allow us to go to the ceremony room almost immediately and Instead of having to worry about getting the staff I'll be able to use it The only downside that happens here is you can potentially talk to the thing right next to it That's one of the most awkward hitboxes in the entire game right here So you can see there's a big minor difference between the two it's very close and it's annoying. Funny enough, this is like one of the only things in the game you don't want to text skip because you want to have your cursor right here. You can text skip this though, and it makes you go slightly faster. There we go. And now that I have the rope, I can still do everything else. You want the rope so you can skip a lot. The sole reason I grab the rope is because I don't want to talk to Lot. It's not very fun talking to Lot, and it takes a long time. And clock tower speedrunning is mostly a, a big thing where like, oh, Jennifer's a bad friend who ignores everybody and just runs to the top and murders Miss Mary. There we go. And while we're down here, we're going to do dog sleep once again. But I want to talk about input buffering because I highlighted it a little bit, but I haven't talked about it much. So while I mentioned it reduces lag, it's kind of insane how much time it really saves. And it's in every room it saves time. Like, the difference is notable. It saves seconds in each room. Like, there's a category in this game that's about two minutes. We chop down about five seconds in that category, alone with the input buffering. It's kind of insane how much time you can save with this one trick alone. And the trick is literally just mashing the item menu. That's all it is. This is a very easy trick to do. It's not at all hard. In fact, I think Clock Tower is one of the more accessible speed games to do. It has a lot of resources. It's rather nice. And the tricks aren't that hard to do, actually. The hardest one in the game is arguably Tech Skip, but you can do a run without Tech Skip. You can beat the old, like, when I started World Record without doing the Tech Skip. Anyway, we're going to get Dan the Man here again, and as I mentioned, he's the whole idea of the cradle under the stars. If you're wondering why Mary's so angry at you, by the way, it's because you killed her child. I think most people are angry when you kill their children. Like, I know if I had a demon orphan baby, or a demon baby unborn in her moon who ate people's hands, I would still want that child to be alive. It's my child. I, I don't plan on having one, but I mean, if it happens, I'm... I don't want to let people murder my child, especially with kerosene. It's not a good idea. 
The funniest part, though, is the Panic Mints actually can be lost, and I do think there is a bit of variance depending on your health state. Um, the game actually mentions that the more panicked you are, so if you're red, which you most of the time will be in a red health state when you're down here, I think it takes a bit more than you would if you would be blue. Now, if you want to recover your health state, you it, really, if you want to, you can. You have to wait in position or find something to actually help you. For example, you can solve puzzles, um, finding medicine, just waiting in a hallway, it all works out. The man is on fire once again. I don't know if kerosene actually does that to orphan skin children, but I have never actually tried it, so I can't really disprove it. Anyway, Lama mentioned we're on C ending, and C ending is going to be on the second floor. It's one of two endings on the second floor, and for canon endings, this is my favorite in the entire game. For canon endings. And what we're gonna do is stop on the elevator. It's a bit awkward, you have to kind of count your steps in that room and then stop it. A lot of people run straight in the elevator, then you have to do the walk of shame back, and then we go. Fun fact about Dan, by the way, Dan's not totally done. Uh, Dan's not actually dead, believe it or not. Let's just say that much. Dan might be something else. Anyway, as I mentioned, for the C ending, we go to the second floor. The first floor is just broken, so you can't go there. The basement is the one we're on. And the second floor is going to allow us to get the C ending. Now, the difference between C and D is in C, we know the truth about Mary. So this time, Mary is not going to stab us. We're not going to give her the big hug, because we know she's not a welcoming person. Also, in a strange matter of faction, it's harder to outrun a giant baby than it is to... I, you know what, you know, it makes more sense now that I say it out loud. We're gonna push over a 40-year-old woman. Mary is about 40, and we're gonna shove her down almost immediately. It's extremely fast, by the way. Like, this panic event is very short in comparison to every other panic event in the game. Also, her portrait changes when you see she's becoming a traitor. She gets knocked down, like, almost immediately, and then I can start just input buffering in the room. Anyway, now that Mary's on the ground, she's actually gonna chase us, but this is why I love the ending. If you're wondering, Mary currently is saying, Bobby, Bobby, she killed Dan, go get her. And you're getting chased by Mary, you're getting chased by Bobby. Everything about this section I love. And you actually have to know what to do, which is walk up the clock tower. The storm, the ladder, the clock tower, and this is why I think C ending is canon. It's just the most thematic, and it's the one ending you're actually, you know, taking care of Mary. So we climb the ladder, and she's gonna try throwing us off the clock tower. If you fail this, she actually throws you off, but pushing the button, we're gonna kick her down, because she deserves it, and eat once again. And now instead of Laura falling down, it is Mary, and thundering up top, it's just the same Bobby scene, and it's the same exact one. We know it's the ending that we're on the bottom, I uh, kicked off Mary, so we don't have to watch Bobby die once again. You can assume Bobby lives there. He doesn't. But now we've done eight endings in this game, and we have one more to go, as I mentioned. And the last ending is going to be the S ending. And the S ending, we are going to be going for the perfect route, and this is one of the most competitive categories in the game. This is the category I normally do, and this is also the category I did at Super Nintendo Superstars last year. But believe it or not, last time this marathon happened, I actually did have a run in it, but it was the S ending category. So it's effectively the same thing. It only took me an hour 21 to get to the S ending. But at most, this will take 20 minutes. I called about a 140 in this run. I, that should be about right. Wow, the first run, I didn't get the key. That's kind of unlucky. And another thing I want to mention while we're here is just for an SNES game, it's kind of insane what they did. Like, so much happened in this. There wasn't a lot of horror games in the SNES in general. If you're reading the CNN, by the way, Jennifer lives. She starts the clock tower, she survives. But nine endings in this game, it's considered one of the mothers of horror. It came out before Resident Evil, it came out before Silent Hill. Um, a few games did predate this, like Alone in the Dark, but really this is the first of its kind to even do cat and mouse style gameplay. It really is one of the mothers of horror, and a lot of games have reference to this game. And now I finally got the key, and this can be anywhere from a 134, or one, about 135, to a 145. We'll see what we get. And it just kind of just goes to show that I even playing this game today, I do love. Although, as a speedrun, it does have some kind of downsides, I should say. 
And a bit of the downsides do come from the fact that you have to worry about RNG. A lot of people who play this game, they end up dropping out because of the RNG, sadly. And RNG can come in a lot of sections. Like, I had to reset in the first 30 seconds because I didn't get the key I wanted. Now, in all endings, it kind of reduces the amount of resets you want. However, I still have to reset that key because it's faster to do it eight times that way than taking the other way once. And I'd much rather do it this way. And... It's weird how a j obscure Japanese horror game has such relevance even today. It's really kind of terrifying. Now, if you don't know what the grandfather of horror is, it's Sweet Home. Sweet Home is a great game, by the way. I would like to do that more. Something about retro horror is absolutely great. But we're going to keep going, and we'll know our fate in this run if we get the Demon Idol. If we don't get the Demon Idol, that's okay, but we'll see. I'm going to take the lower floors again, just, just for the sake of it. There's no reason to take the upper floor. Um, mainly because then it also just ruins the... If I Again, it's a 1 in 80 shot if I get a perfect room upstairs, and I'm not going to go for that. I'd much rather take the downstairs, because it's faster and safer. And then I would be right, because the library is literally right here. Believe it or not, this is the old strategy that we used to use on the bottom floor. But then we changed it to the top floor, which the reason why the top floor is faster, you, ha you have to backtrack less. You don't have to run upstairs again and backward to do this again. You only have to go one route, and it's a certain loop. Anyway, dot, 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 and no dot, 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 but we can beat the game regardless without it. Uh, this is likely going, to, uh, that took me about two minutes, like two and a half minutes to find that. So this is likely going to be about a 19 minute S ending, which will be fine. Well, that was a bit rough there. And, like, for horror games on the SNES, I really put my thoughts into this. Um, I think next time it comes around, I really want to get another one ready. There's really only two even horror-themed games on the SNES. There's really not that many. There's a lot of horror games on the NES, weirdly enough, but SNES really didn't have that many. It wasn't really until PC and the PS1, the PS1 that you got them. So it's just kind of interesting to see how horror developed as a genre. Um, I do a lot of horror speedrunning, so all this stuff just fascinates me, and I do know where my games came from. And I think it's just kind of a fun thing in general. Because with a lot of games in the SNES catalog as well, it was a very popular thing for platformers. It was, um, you know, stuff that's dungeon crawlers, running guns. This is really the only point and click that I can think of off the top of my head, outside of maybe, like, some weird educational game that may have released on the SNES, that is point and click. And even for a point-and-click speedrun, it does point-and-click better than any other point-and-click does. Just because you actually get skips in this game, which is kind of strange when you think about it. And that's kind of my little uh, love note to Clock Tower, I should say. And the final goal here is to find the staff, which we just found it. And that is lucky. I'm going to show off a little fun possible Bobby chase as well, just because it'll be funny to get chased by Bobby. That's not going to really have any relevance. Actually, no, I shouldn't, just because I realize Bobby can act. This is an A ending, so I don't want to do that. But, yeah, going into, into it, though, we're going to be deviating the route a little bit here. As you know, I've been wanting to go to Mary each time with the staff. And the, the main reason, if you haven't picked up on it, is even if you have the staff and you don't want to get the Mary ending, you have to go to that room regardless, because there's a key in the middle that teaches you how to use the staff. You have to go to at least four additional rooms in order to get the staff route, which that's why I'm not a big fan of it. It's a massive time difference, which keep in mind, I only got a single demon idol run this entire time, but it's still underestimate, which is why I counted for all this time. But with the staff, I'm going to do one other thing. We may even see it. It's just the interaction Mary has if you already know the truth. There you go. Oh, sorry, contrary to popular belief, because this is a thing that exists, and some of you may be wondering about it, there is an SNES mouse, for some strange reason, that was a thing. And the SNES mouse is a, um... It doesn't really help you speedrun Clock Tower, funny enough. You think it would, but it doesn't, because the whole reason why the speedrun works is because I have the buttons to press. The fact that I can push two buttons simultaneously, the action and the item menu, is nice. The fact that I can run without just pushing buttons makes the game faster. It means I can do half the glitches in this game. With a mouse, you actually kill the speedrun, because you can't use the item menu at the same time as anything else. I've actually looked at many other point-and-clicks, but they don't do that strategy where you can use the item menu in addition to an action. It, this glitch just isn't a thing in other point-and-clicks. The only other 
point and click game I found that possibly even had a chance of being a, like a good speedrun was Franmo, but the game just really long, sadly. Like Clock Tower, you have your variants. The game is anywhere from two minutes to two hours. You have multiple categories of time difference, which is really nice. But obviously, it does vary, as I would say. Anyway, we're going to see the dad one last time, and we're going to ignore Mr. Daddy-O here. You get the dad, the dad man, and we don't want to talk to him. I can't tell you how many runs I had to do back in the day where I talked to that dad. We literally saved a minute and a half off the dad. At one point, I had a 1444 world record. I got like 13 the day after. Literally the day after we discovered you didn't have to do that, it saved a minute and a half. And one more chance of Bobby here, and we'll see what happens. And we still, need, we still do need to learn how to use the staff, but this will all be very quick, and we're pretty much cemented in, luckily, provided I pass the dog. And it's just kind of interesting to see how far this game has come as well. And especially back in the day, people weren't doing the glitches, funny enough. Nobody was really doing the glitches of this game. And it wasn't until a while back that people were doing these, and it saved a lot of time. I think the old world record in this glitch list would likely be a 25-minute run. If you had to do this glitch list, it's likely to be 25 minutes, because you're forced to get the other items, which is rather upsetting. But with this, you skip two major key items. You don't have to go on certain routes. Like back in the old day, you'd have to go to the attic, which is one of the big reasons why I don't like doing glitch lists. I've done glitch lists once for a marathon, and it's just not a fun run. Anyway, final ball boss fight. Let's see if it works. And as well, keeping if you've been keeping tally, we've done eight of the nine endings right now. And it's only taken me about an hour and a half to get this far. It would likely take me, I'm guessing, a 144? Maybe a 145. And I got the perfect doll fight. I really wish I had these more consistently, but it varies. If you're also wondering why I do the little pause in front every time, if you run straight to the door, Jennifer will say, Oh, the door's locked, you can't pass. Which I don't want. It takes time to do that. And it would be much slower than the alternative, which is just take a moment to breathe, wait for the doll to die, and then you're good to go. But now we have to go back to the pesticide. And you know, since we have the time, I'll actually show you guys what happens if you don't use the pesticide. Just because you don't really get to see it that often. In fact, for some of you, this may be your first experience to Clock Tower. So you may be wondering, hey, what happens if you just don't use the pesticide on the meat locker? Also, another fun fact, that meat locker is actually filled with orphan meat, as I mentioned earlier. Because this is a family of cannibals. Fun fact. So we're going to go back, get the pesticide. We don't need the rope this time. And if you are wondering, another reason why I don't like glitchless, in order to get the, um, the robe, you have to talk to that. But in order to get to that, you have to actually learn how to do it. Most of the actions in this game require learning, which is not very fun, as you noticed. Like, for example, in the staff room where we learn how to use the staff, Jennifer must learn how to do that. We're trying to avoid as much learning as possible. Another weird thing about this game is Clock Tower really just doesn't have a lot of music if you're running, so it's just the ambient sounds of footsteps as you go. Exploration mode was meant to be a lot more ambience, and they're expecting Bobby to chase you a lot more. But one thing I wish this game had was more music. The music in this game works well when it happens, but a lot of the game is just kind of not music. It's just footsteps till the end of time. And Jennifer's footsteps is not the most ideal thing in the game, especially, once again, on stairs. Hopefully this will be one of the, we'll have to take one more stairs after this at a minimum, but we'll see. And we will keep going as well. One more room, we don't have to go to the car again as well. We don't have to go to the car. All we have to do is go here. And as I mentioned, I'm going to show you what happens with the pesticide if we, uh, let me get the ham first, just because that will be faster. There we go. And I don't want to get thrown in the shed either, believe it or not, because that would be slower. I should not be getting thrown into the shed. We don't even want to see Lot die in the shed. We're not going to be going there. In fact, it's impossible to go to the shed at this moment in time, to my knowledge, unless you manage to get an extra key. Anyway, I didn't use the pesticide, so the roaches actually attack you, which you get the horrifying music to. And it lasts as long as you're in the room. But don't you worry. All that happens is your health state lowers, and Jennifer becomes filthy for all, like, what, seven seconds in the room? And these bugs follow us. I don't know if the bugs can actually kill you. I think they do tick on damage, but they're not actually going to do anything. So you can just leave the room and re-enter. Funny enough, a, f a weird thing in general is a lot of the things in this game are just exit the room and re-enter it and you solve the puzzle. 
during one of the categories that you normally do as an individual one, G ending, the strategy is literally just, okay, leave the room, re-enter it, and then Bobby disappears. And the reason for that is a lot of the enemies in this game is just to build dread, so they never expected you to go back in the same exact room. So, for example, I can just leave the room, re-enter it, and then I'm good to go. Like, if a Bobby is in a room and you re-enter that room, you can just hide in the same room for Bobby and he won't know. Although Bobby does get smarter throughout the game if you aren't aware of how to abuse it. So, if you hide in, like, under a bed twice, Bobby will stab the bed. In there's certain areas of the game, Bobby's actually a lot smarter than you give him credit for. And just in the speedrun, you kind of ignore all of Bobby's intelligence because we don't want to deal with it. Dealing with Bobby is not a good thing here. In fact, we try getting rid of him as soon as possible. Bobby is a smart, efficient killer for a reason. Oh, great! Now I get the Mary, but we get to see what I'm talking about. So now that I know the truth, Mary's gonna try stabbing me, and I don't wanna get stabbed. I don't wanna get stabbed here, so I'm gonna run away. And it just takes a bit longer, but... There we go. We're just gonna run out of that room, but as I mentioned, she's just gonna re-enter the game. And once we re-enter the room, she's just not gonna be there. And that's just a thing that happens. Kind of like that. Also, sadly, we can't look at Laura die again. We actually need Laura to survive and to get to the end game. That's one of the requirements of the S ending. One friend must live. Why did I grab the ham, though? I didn't need... You know what? We'll just take the ham. It's a fun item to grab. My muscle memory going down here told me to grab the ham. I didn't need the ham. That's actually the one thing I didn't need, but I grabbed the ham. Anyway, we have two more flights of stairs. One up, one down. And we're almost to the end of the game, luckily. It's getting very close. We just have to get to the last area. Which, again, staff. And you could read the book in here, but it's not really worth it because you need to see Watt die anyway. So we want to avoid that. Also, the downside of finding out the truth about Mary is you don't get to score the booze from her, so we don't end up in the shed, sadly. And we're not going to see the shed man anymore, and we don't get to bop Mary in the back of the head anymore. But, yeah, this has been the big thing in Clock Tower for me. I know the community has been kind of hopping up a little bit. There's been newer runners coming in. Uh, old, some of the old runners come back every now and again. But it just really is a very interesting speedrunning community that doesn't really get looked at. And if for any of you guys who are wondering, hey, can I get into speedrunning? Can I learn how to do it? This is definitely... A, wait, what am I doing? This is definitely a great game to get started on. It has guides. It has references. It's a very easy game to pick up. It's a fast game. Like, the main competitive categories are respectively 2 minutes and 15, or 12 minutes. And both of them are very quick. And there's actually a category as well, which I'll show this off at the end of this. But it's not going to really be a thing that we have to do in this category. But I will show it off anyway, because it's the one category in the game that's zero RNG. It has a little bit of everything for everybody. If you want to play it, the only rule is you have to do it in Japanese, which isn't too bad. Anyway, now that we discovered how to use that, we can leave the room. Give me a moment. And now we are officially ready for the end game. And we have the ham, which... A funny thing as well, I, I know I've said that a lot of times, but it just I guess a lot of weird quirks in this game I didn't understand when I first played it. The ham doesn't work on the dog. Now, every dog I've ever met, when you feed them ham, they're kind of in love with that. But, for some reason, it doesn't work. Even if Jennifer Connelly is handing them ham, it just, it doesn't work and the dog will kill you almost immediately. Also, to kind of show you guys, since we have a lot of time left over, uh, my estimate on this was a 150. We have a lot of time. Like, realistically, this would probably take me the amount of time it takes to get to the end game, and then probably about two to three minutes after that. We're just going to go all the way. And I'll show off a few extra things. Also, for anyone who's curious, Jennifer's screen in the bottom left, that is me all the time. I am constantly making that face. In fact, I'm making that face right now. Whenever anything mildly inconvenient happens in my life, that's the face I make. When I get told I'm slightly overestimate, I make that face. When I got all the staffs, that was just me the entire time. Anyway, we finally know how to use the staff, meaning we can finally get out of the area. Also, I don't like the dialogue that comes with this. I wish I could use the ham to get out, but... You would think Jennifer would know to just throw a staff in a vase, but that's too difficult, I imagine. And as I mentioned earlier, it, it kind of sucks as well, because the demon idol is also canon, so... 
you should be able to get out of this. And we did everything earlier as well. And as I mentioned, just to show you guys I'm not lying to you in the difficulty of the dog skip, I'll actually die to the dog to show you what it's like. It's very fast to recover because they give you a continue right in this area, so I can definitely show it off. I already showed off reverse dog skip as well, so I feel good about that. But watch. As I mentioned, I have a ham and a key. Normally, you would die if you don't have the Roman perfume, as you'll see right now. We're going to see a dead end come up. I don't normally do dead ends. But as right here, you run into the dog, you get knocked down, and the dog will actually kill you, which straight up gives you a dead end. Which I don't want the dead end. And it is a bigger trick than people notice. It is very subtle, but keep in mind, I've been speedrunning this game for almost years now. I make it look very, very straightforward and easy. But when I started, this trick killed me all the time. In fact, I always worried about this dog ending. Uh, a lot of people who were uh, who would watch me would constantly reference me choking on dog here. So I'm not a big fan of choking on the dog, so I'm going to just bypass it. You have to just do this again, but it's fine. And the continue section in this is very nice. It is very nice. Keep going, and dogs again. And there we go. And that's the difference. Also, I I don't normally reference I don't normally read chat during these, however, I do want to make a quick note. This game doesn't have any native music. Like the sound is on, trust me, believe me, the sound is on. It's all footsteps. You can definitely hear the sound. It's definitely on, trust me. The game's just not a very noisy game because they want you to feel the ambience. You know, it's going to be a lot more time, but that is one of the downfalls of the game. I wish they had more music, but they don't. So, too bad? But now we get the final Cradle Under the Stars, and this will be the best one, with input buffering. And the way to get S ending is required to be at the roof. You must go to the third floor, and that will be important. And here's the final Dan, and you know, at this point we all know what happens with Dan. We're going to do it to him once again, and you know I had to do it to him. I've done it to Dan like, well, let's count. Uh, I did it once in the first run. I did it about five times. And this is the first time, the first, fifth, fifth time. That's it. I was about to say first and fourth together. But this is the fifth time I'm burning Dan alive. However, keep in mind, he's wearing an orphan meat shell. And as you know, those are immune to fire. So Dan may be back in a later story. Oh, I did? It's definitely still going. Yeah, it's definitely showing on my end as well. Like, it, it is showing. The game may be just kind of quiet, to be honest. It is a rather quiet game. So I hear everything. We escape up. And let us keep going. And that was the last Dan. And he is dead. And we're almost at the end of the game. Which will come up right now. Almost there. And... Ah, gotcha. Gotcha. Makes That's all good, Rob. Um, most, oh, but what? E exit the room. Thank you. We're going to be e exiting the elevator here. I'll see if I can re-plug in my plugs or increase the volume. It's showing on my screen, but it's not really doing much. Let's see if I can do this. Um, properties? I don't know that. I'm going to go to the third floor, and I'll see if I can fix it for the little area here. Oh, there we go. Um. Third floor, and let's try this out. Let's do 175. Okay, let me know how this one works. That might be better for the end game in the elevator, but we are almost at the end, and we'll be hitting time in a moment here. So if you guys enjoyed Clock Tower, if you like horror games in general, just feel free to just check me out sometime. Check out the other Clock Tower runners. There's a lot of cool guys who do this game. Uh, I do wish this game had more community. It's still thriving. It's very easy to still compete. But it's very easy to pick up as well. And I know winning clicks normally get overlooked. However, I do think this game has a lot to offer that kind of just gets ignored, sadly. And don't you worry, we'll have a little bit of exhibition afterwards, so that'll be fine. Sometimes it happens, but luckily most of the game doesn't worry too much. Anyway, I know I got S endings, so we can see Laura laying down the ground. And I like doing S endings last because it's good. 
and it's going to be in time in a moment here. It looks like a 143 most likely. We have to wait for Jennifer to get up, and time happens when the panic event ends, which will happen in a moment here. And let's see. There we go. And time. And that is a 143.04. Let me see something really quick. I'll let play out. Let me see. Let me see something. Too loud now? All right, I'll reduce it. That should be better. Maybe one more notch. All right, that should be better right there. I think it should. My voice should be. Yeah, it's going in higher ranges than the game. From the look of it, I think it is. That should be better. Let me ask. But as I mentioned earlier, Dan, uh, Bobby dies because the clock tower starts, and he dies from several tumors. And that is clock tower all endings. We got all nine endings in the game in about an hour 43, which isn't that bad. Wow, we have a lot of time, by the way, to make up. Um... Let me type this. So, I don't think you guys enjoy the ending, but I'm gonna do uh, two showcases. Um, one of them is gonna be a minor death showcase, which is a couple of the funny deaths in the game. Um, also, how's the sound right now? Hopefully it's better. So I was at zero decibels earlier, but now it's at 2.9. I had it at six earlier, so this should be better, I think. Is the sound better right now? I think it might be. And I'm glad to see you guys enjoyed it. Uh, definitely, I do a lot. Of, I do this game very often. I'm still getting S ending world record in this very often, so I do this game at, like at least once a week. So it looks like the sound is good, and now we can do some. Uh, I guess we can do a bit of trickery here. So I'm going to do something called the Glitched D ending. Uh, glitched D is a category that has zero RNG. Now you guys heard me the entire time complaining about RNG. I'm going to show off a category that has zero of it. And it's also going to break the game in a bit of a unique way. So what I'm going to do right now is we're going to quick start it. And ideally, I'm going to end this run in about two minutes. And in two minutes, we're going to end the game. Uh, let me turn it down one more notch, just to be sure. And let's go about 130. 30 ought to be good. Now let's do 125. 125. There we go. That should be good. Okay. So Glitch D isn't happening right now. And... Let's go. 3, 2, 1, go. So how does Glitch D work? The... Normally, you have to kill one, at least one friend in order to progress through the game. Oh, wait, I missed the area. That's fine. And the one friend can happen in one of three ways. It can happen in the shower, through the ceiling, or it can happen by the pool. However, there's actually a glitch you can do that prevents Bobby from spawning. I usually get it, but it may take a couple tries. I may need to reset it here, but we'll see. It's not the easiest trick in the world to get, but it is a fun one. So we'll see if we can get it. You have to actually input buffer here to get world record, but I want to go three trees in, about three. Ah, oh, I almost had it. I um, I double, I double tapped it. That's fine. Uh, as I mentioned, this this skip is rather difficult. I was gonna say this trip. I almost had it, but I missed the button by a hair. So let's go back. It'll bring me back outside. And the idea here is on the third tree, I want to do a bit of a running loop. So I do this, which will come up right now. Let's see if I get it. There we go. So what I just did there is you heard the scream the first time, which actually kind of debuts this and explains it. I skipped the scream. Now, skipping the scream means my friend Anne never actually dies. And you'll see where we come out of in the next area. I want you to pay attention from the all endings run. And take a quick note, because I'm going to show off right now. We're ending up right here towards the West Wing hallway from earlier. Now, Anne dies over here, and Anne was supposed to die in the pool. However, Laura's not dead, 
and oh. Anne's not dead. So, what's happening right now, and what's going to occur? Because we can technically go to the car right now, as you know. There is the car ending, and currently zero friends have died. Remember I said there was no RNG in this category? This is why there's no RNG in the category. You skip all the friend deaths, you never have to interact with Bobby, and then you can immediately leave in the car. However, you still need to do one of the most difficult tricks in the entire game, which is frame-perfect turning over the mark where Bobby spawns. You physically move forward enough to where it works, and then time. You do tech skips, input buffering, and then in about two minutes, you have Clock Tower B. And that is Glitch D ending. Everyone knows why it's called Glitch D ending? You remember that ending list from earlier? What this category shows, first off, it doesn't even show the car leaving. It shows nothing but credits at one point, I think. There's the credits. But when you go back to the main menu, it fills in the D ending for whatever reason. So us as a community, we decided this is called Glitch D and is valid in D categories. So for those of you guys who are like, oh, I don't want to deal with RNG in my speedrun, there you go. Um, that was an incredibly difficult category to do, by the way. And it gets even harder because if you want to get a world record, you have to do input buffering and you have to do that trick I did that I failed the first time blind. I don't do world record in this category because it's insanely difficult. And I'll show it off right now, in fact, because we can get there very quick. I'll show you how difficult it gets, in fact. And in addition to that, I'll showcase some deaths as well. So let's go back in and I'll show you what you need to do to get world record. It's kind of insane. To get world record, what you must do, and I hate doing this, I'll try it once. I'm not going to try more than that because it's insanely difficult. And if you did the game blindfolded, it would help. But the thing is, you don't even have the correct speed because input buffering varies your speed. So you don't even have that going for you. You have to try to predict it off some weird area, which I normally count to six and then try my best. That's literally all I do. So remember how I had the vision of the third tree and I used that as a marker of what I wanted to do? You, If you want to get a world record, you have to do this. And I failed it, because you know what? I did it, that's blind. And you literally have to do the trick blind, which is insanely difficult. And that's why I don't do this category for world record. I have a decent PB, I mainly do it to show off these days, because it's a pretty interesting category. However, it doesn't really work that well. Anyway, right now, what I'll do for you guys, since we have a bit more time, I'm going to show off a bit more of the unique deaths and rooms that we missed. Just because there's a few deaths in the game I think are rather funny, and I think they're kind of worth seeing, to be honest. The main two I'm going to show off are going to be coming up. I'm going to show three things off. One of them is going to be... Um, not this room here, but this room over here. Because uh, we haven't even been in this room once. This is where you normally get the perfume. Now, a couple of things in this room can actually kill you. One of them is going to be... Well, let's play around the room. What should we search, guys? Let's go this bird. I think this bird is a good thing. And this is going to be investigating the bird. Now, you actually have to talk to this bird in a glitchless category if you want to escape Bobby. You don't have to do it anymore because there's a better way of escaping Bobby. However, this bird can actually kill you the more you fight him. He'll actually deplete your health state, and if you're red and the bird stays on you, you'll die. The way you want to take out the bird is from the bed sheet. I'm going to show you death by bird. It takes a while, by the way. The game is expecting you to think on your feet here. So it works pretty well. And you can see my health in the bottom left is depleting from blue to red, and then at some point we'll actually be dead. Which you almost are. Let's see what happens. And death by bird. Dead end. I also reset it because it's just faster. And then I'll show one more death, and then just one more area we kind of missed. He's also saying, I'll kill you, if you're wondering what he's saying. He's saying, I kill you. So the other death in this room is actually with the mirror. So a lot of people end up messing this up. There's three things to search in this one span. You have a frame, a drawer, and a mirror. Let's see how much you search the mirror, shall we? The mirror will actually kill you. And this is my favorite casual bait. The mirror will actually straight up murder you. It's really hard to react to that, by the way, because most people don't expect it. Every time I watch someone play this game casually, I trick them into going to the mirror because I'm a terrible person. 
And it's the funniest thing in the world to me watching them die to the mirror. They usually get a laugh out of it because I'm pretty nice in uh, helping them out. But that is the mirror death. And it kills you almost instantly. Anyway, now that we're here, I'm going to show you guys just one more thing in terms of Bobby. Because we haven't really interacted with Bobby all that much. And as I mentioned, Bobby's supposed to be hyper intelligent, so he's going to be lurking around you. And this is also just a death we haven't seen yet. And this is going to be the effective G ending of the game, and this happens in the shower. Most people who play Clock Tower end up seeing this ending. Uh, this is, or this death, I should say. So this is Laura's death. We haven't really watched Laura die all that much, so this is how Laura dies. And really, it's the most iconic part of the entire game when you think about it. And I just love this, by the way. It gets me every time. The scissors in the bathtub, the close-up on the eye. It captured fear in an SNES area. And this gets a lot of people, by the way. Like, that still is just so great to me to this very day. Just the bathtub area. He's coming out of Laura. Funny enough, Bobby can actually just kill you immediately here. But I'm gonna outsmart Bobby. Bobby is chasing me, and I'm gonna hide from him. Wait, where should I go, guys? Where should I go? Where should I hide from Bobby? I don't know. I'm going back to the same room. So Bobby is... You outsmart Bobby by doing the 150 IQ move of going back into the same exact room and then just hiding in here. It's a 50-50 chance it works, let's see if it works. It did not work that time, but it normally either does or doesn't. This is what you do for G ending. And quite literally, all you have to do is wait for Bobby. You can keep continuing it, by the way, and it is funny. World record in G ending actually requires you to do this strategy. And the RNG for this area just resets every time you do it, so it's weird Bobby either decides to enter the room or leave. So I keep trying until Bobby just leaves. Bobby, are you gonna be cooperative here? Please be cooperative, Bobby. I need you to go away. Please stay with me, guys. Bobby, go away. Bobby, please leave. Bobby, leave. If you're wondering, by the way, this does work and is the world record strategy. We used to have to take the bed, which took longer, but then we found out just re-enter the room and Bobby doesn't do anything. We'll see if we get at least once. My god, Bobby is violent today. Bobby is extremely violent. If you're wondering, by the way, this is in a sense that it's RNG if it works or doesn't work. But the whole idea of why that actually ends up working as a strategy of going back into the room is because Bobby is trying to cut you off through other rooms. So he can actually start finding you in weird areas of the mansion. He'll always end up in one room. Wow, four in a row. Jesus Christ, Bobby. This is worse than the Mary one from earlier, by the way. This is worse than Mary. Bobby either does it or he doesn't. Bobby is being a very rude dude. See, when I do this casually, Bobby gives me like five times or he just doesn't kill me. And the speed run during a marathon, though. You know what? Bobby is just gonna be a rude guy. And let's see. Bobby does not want to cooperate, Sally. I'll try it one more time, but then after that, we'll just, uh. I'll show off one more Bobby death, and that should be good. I'll try it one more time, just because Bobby's being really smart here. As I mentioned, Bobby has, uh, I guess a higher IQ than I am, considering he's fooled me like nine times now. Okay, Bobby, please cooperate for the stream. Be nice to us. Bobby, you jerk! Okay, so we're gonna find another way that Bobby can kill us, and this is actually probably one of my favorite ones in the- Oh, I hit game start. That's bad. Well, I'll actually just show off the H ending. Like, what that one is. Because that one's pretty fast. And H ending is a pretty cool category in general, but we should be fine. And we can still see the same Bobby death. It only takes slightly longer. This is about a two minute category. I actually got a world record in this category recently after literally a year of attempts. Because this category is all RNG. Bobby wins. I'll let Bobby win there. But Bobby can actually stop and leave the room immediately. It's funny if it happens, but it's not always the case. Bobby's the big deciding factor there. But the other Bobby death I really want to show you, and it kind of just, it does show how smart Bobby is especially when people play it, is Bobby's hyper-intelligent. And he doesn't really get, well, he got me like nine times there, so I guess he really is hyper-intelligent. But even then, 
Bobby is supposed to outsmart you at every point in time. If you try hiding under the bed earlier on, Bobby will end up uh, killing you because the bird will rat out on you. If you try hiding in certain areas and don't want to panic a bit, Bobby will still kill you. You can actually get into a struggle with Bobby, however it's going to vary. And the H ending, the worst part about it is here's the world record strap by the way for anyone who's curious. This is what we have to do to get world record in H ending right now. You wait in the room. Then Bobby either spawns or he doesn't. Because this becomes become an RNG cluster and it's terrible. Anyway though, what I want to show off is this. So, this is just a method that you kind of get Bobby here, and this is uh, just a fun little thing that most people, don't, uh, most people try at one point. And for you guys watching right now, this is another death as well. And this is probably my favorite Bobby death in the entire game that kind of goes a bit unnoticed, to be honest. So, we're heading in the back. And let's see, it should happen. I want to say it happens if I try hopping down. Oh, we actually go down, never mind. Bobby, you were not being cooperative here. Can I restart it? Maybe. See, Bobby is ruining everything right now. I, this is the only time Bobby's ever uncooperative, by the way. Bobby is normally a very cooperative boy. There we go, okay, we're back. So this should work, go up here, push down the ladder, and then run away. And what's supposed to happen is Bobby decides he doesn't want to play. Push down the ladder, hide in the corner. Bobby, please cooperate now. Go wait in the corner. Bobby, don't walk off screen, please. Bobby, you need to leave at any point now, please. Bobby is just an absolute madman here, by the way. I love Bobby. I absolutely love Bobby. <laughs> okay, let's see if he does it. He should do it this time. At least, there we go. Here it is. And this is what I wanted to show off. And it's the fact that you can't outsmart Bobby. And that's the Bobby death I wanted to show. Anyway, outside that, there really isn't too much uh, more to show. Um, all the categories in the games are more just kind of, you get them. Um, the ones that are mainly competitive are H, G, D, and S. But even then, I am very happy to be able to show off at um, SNES Superstars once again. Um, I think that's all I really have for extras. There's more I can technically do, but those are really the notable things I want to do that are quick, easy, and just I know I can show them off. Well, hopefully without Bobby in general. And I'm very happy I've been able to do this once again. Um, I'm, I was surprised they gave me all endings, and I, I hope you all enjoyed it. I know maybe some of you weren't big fans of the game, but for those of you who were, I definitely... Do, do hope you liked it. So, uh, this has been Clock Tower. I'm McDysis, and yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like horror games, I do a lot of them. I have 49 different horror speedruns. Funny enough, one of them is Zombies Ate My Neighbors. So, if you guys want more of that, definitely let me know. Anyway, next we have, uh, I don't know who's next. We have somebody coming up. We have Super Metroid. Wow, that's actually a big game. Uh, I do hope that goes well. It should be a fun run, and I do wish you all a great rest of your day. Have a good night, everybody.